hi welcome back to this video it's actually the last video in this series and i must say congratulations to you for coming this far because we've actually uh, gone through a very long journey right from implementation of the cluster from the windows level and also implementation of the always on availability group in this particular video i have just a couple of things to show you to test manual failover test automatic failover and also have a feel of what the always on availability group dashboard looks like so let's connect to our instances first of all i like to connect to the listener and by the way you can also use the ip address to connect to the listener if you like the listener IP address. Let's connect to our primary. And secondary. So as you can see, we're currently connected to secondary here. And I want you to take note that when it comes to troubleshooting, always on availability group, there are two areas, uh, major areas that you have to uh, look at so first of all is the failover cluster manager which is the windows server level clustering that we first of all uh, implemented the role section actually shows you the availability group that's been configured so if there are any issues you can come right here and you can get some information or, or, or on the logs and you can also see which cluster which server is actually the current host or the active uh active host in the cluster itself on the windows level so currently we have secondary here and take note as well that it, there's possible it's possible for the secondary server to be the active node on the windows cluster level but it's playing the secondary role on the sql always on availability group level so bear that in mind as well all right uh, let me first of all show you the the always on availability group dashboard so if you go into the ag right click and go to show dashboard you can that's the other side that's the second place you can go to uh, for troubleshooting as well because it's going to show you the status of your setup basically so the primary instance is also the secondary so coincidentally we have the secondary node which is active both on the windows level and also on the uh, SQL Server AG level what I like to do is first of all show you what happens when there is an automatic failover so an automatic failover occurs um, when there are issues with the the databases as a group so if anything happens to the databases as a group it triggers um a failover right so let's let's do that so for example one of the things uh, that can happen to all the databases together is the server going down so let's see what's going to happen if we uh, shut down one of the servers so the active uh, at the moment is uh, secondary yeah so let's because I don't want to shut down this actually let's do this let me bring up the secondary server as well from from the remote desktop alright so the primary um, remote desktop is now up so what I'm gonna do is to restart the secondary because it's hosting it's the current active for both windows and sql always on and while that is happening let's see what's happening here if i go into so first of all you can see current host server has automatically shift over on the failover cluster level and already the, the dashboard for ag is complaining and it's showing that um, the secondary is gone but it's still showing red for primary and that's because uh, our primary is also not synchronizing so at the moment it's going to struggle and try to catch up but again because we're restarting uh, this should be fine 
let me close this out and uh, bring up the dashboard from from the listener so it can show us both uh, nodes okay so it's showing us both node and as you can see secondary is down primary is up and the secondary databases are not synchronizing the primary is synchronizing so this dashboard can uh, tell you what's going on if you click on this uh, critical uh, message there you can say availability replica is disconnected and of course that's because we have just restarted the secondary you see so but it's gonna catch up uh, as soon as the server is back up again you see everything catching up so X point the roles in the FCM value value cluster manager the role is now running and it's going to catch up here as well if we refresh on the so primary uh, okay let's go to secondary so secondary used to be the primary let's refresh it's now the secondary you see and everything has done green so this is pretty much what I just wanted to show you that um, when it comes to automatic failover um, circle server will handle everything it will make put all the records it needs to put in the on the Windows level which is the cluster here and as well uh, the DNS records will get updated uh, if it needs to be I mean you don't really have to do anything it's just that you have to be aware when there are problems going on so that if there is need to do a manual failover then you can do that and let me just show you uh, that in action so to do a manual failover basically um, we have secondary uh, which is hosting the secondary so uh, let's now do a manual failover from okay we can do that from the uh, listener so it will just connect so failover you can as well launch the failover wizard from the dashboard as well so this box will come up so if you hit next as you can see uh, the current primary is primary server and the instance that we're going to connect to to fail over to is going to be the secondary and it's telling telling us here there is not going to be any data loss and the role is resolving and uh, most of the time you see resolving here but um, you can rely more on the one you see on the uh, SQL Server Management Studio alright so click on next and connect to the server you want to fail over to hit connect and you can see the databases that will get filled over are the three databases that are contained in the availability group so if you take notes on the primary server we have how many databases we have five databases but three of them are part of an availability group and as you can see availability databases are these three all right because if you go to the listener and show the databases on the listener you'll see that it's just well it's actually showing us uh, more than three and that's because let's see who's okay so primary is the active uh, one so it's showing us more than three basically because it's currently on the primary server which has five databases I guess that's why it's showing us all the five databases if we fail over to secondary that has just how many three databases then I believe it will show that but we'll see what happens uh, when we get there so let's carry on with the with the manual failover and hit finish as you can see the progress there and you can script this out if you wanted to the previous uh, stage had that option there so everything the dashboard is also giving you an up-to-date information about what's going on and if we refresh the listener that should um, update itself and sure enough you can see it's just three databases and that's just basically 
Oh no, this is actually secondary. Uh, let's wait for listener to come up. Okay, let's see. All right, good. So there are three databases. So this is one of the ways in which you can know who is the actual and active um, server or database, availability group database. So on secondary, we have just three databases. So in the listener, you have three databases that suggest to you that um, the active secondary is the secondary, the active server, I beg your pardon, is the secondary. But of course, you can get that information right away if you go into the server itself and go to the availability group and just refresh. You can see it's showing that secondary is indeed the active primary. And the primary server, on the other hand, is the uh, active secondary. Okay, so uh, we've covered most of the things already. So. Uh, going from no knowledge at all into what uh, clustering is about uh, implementing always an availability group and i can say that if you have laid your hands on all of these things you are at an intermediary level you can go to any uh, interview for a SQL dba role and ask most answer most of the questions that have been asked of you also if you wish to write the 70 dash uh, 462 exam for Sigma Server 2012 uh, you can as well do that uh, buy some dumps uh, practice some exam questions and you will be able to uh, definitely attempt the uh, exams For all the things that are put on the screen, try to get your hands on them. All the different activities that you're seeing on the screen right now, try to practice them. Each and every one of them. If you have issues, just send a message to Dari on Slack or send a message to the channel on Slack or send an email or if you really do want to uh, try and solve problems yourself google is your friend put qu uh, questions on google and i wish you all the best so uh, see you in more tutorials to come and i'm gonna end this session and this series at this stage bye bye